Hi there everyone and in this video I'd like to show you a very interactive, a very beautiful chess game by the 19th century chess legend Karl Schlechter. His opponent was uh, Bernhard Flessing, uh, Flessig, uh, who was Austrian chess master. And uh, Karl Schlechter is also famous because of drawing against Emmanuel Lesker, the great almighty Emmanuel Lesker, in the World Chess Championship match. So he was almost becoming the World Chess Champion in 1910. He narrowly missed the title. So he was a very strong chess player, an extremely strong chess player. Uh, so almost World Chess Champion and one of the greatest chess players ever who never became the world chess champion. Unfortunately, he died very young, just like many other people, many other chess players. He was only 44 years old when he died. So, okay, but uh, another interesting note about Karl Schlechter. By the way, before not forgetting, uh, this is the picture between Schlechter and Lesker in the world chess championship match. So, a very beautiful, high-quality picture. Okay, so, an amazing picture, by the way. Simply amazing, incredible. An incredible piece of history. Uh, okay, so... Also, Schlechter was known for being a gentleman. He was also a gentleman like a true sportsman person. A true gentleman, but it was not so it was not so difficult to find people like that around those years. He was basically offering to rows to, to his opponents when his opponent was not feeling well. So he could easily win that game. He could easily defeat his opponents when his opponents were not feeling well. But instead of doing that, instead of uh, getting easy victories. He was offering the rose to his opponents. Unbelievable. Those type of people doesn't exist today. I'm sorry to say this, but I had to. Those type of people does not, I repeat, does not exist in today. Amazing, isn't it? So, a true gentleman, a beautiful person, a beautiful human being, and also an incredible chess player, he was basically like the Mikhail Tull, <laughs> actually, from the 19th century of chess. He sometimes played like Mikhail Tull, and this is one of his chess games. So let's check out what happened. Bernhard Flessig, uh, who had the white pieces. Uh, but I want to check out this chess game from the perspective of Karl Schlechter. Flessig starts the game with the Polish opening. A strange looking opening, of course. So e6, developing the bishop, knight to f6, a3, c5. So pushing the pawn, d5, and already we can say that black has a pleasant position. So checking the king, blocking with the knight, and putting pressure on the knight. So the knight is pinned, and white is defending like this, but after capturing the pawn, it looks like white is forced to capture this pawn. And then bishop to c5 by Schlechter. Well, sacrificing his g-pawn. Queen takes on g7. And after bishop takes on f2, checking the king. He actually getting back the pawn. That was not a sacrifice. But it doesn't look very good. Uh, so it looks like white is attacking the rook. So uh, maybe it looks like black has to defend the rook. Maybe defending the rook, of course, comes to mind. Schlechter played an incredible move, an unbelievable move. He played d4. Well, actually, white can't move the knight, otherwise white is getting checkmated. And white happily captured the rook because this is check after king to e7. Queen takes on c8. And before forgetting, of course, if knight takes knight or moving the knight, then lights out, checkmate. But this d4 move was incredible and not very logical, actually. So that's why I told you that Schlechter 
sometimes played like exactly like Mikhail Tull. So queen takes on h8 and then capturing the bishop as well is black losing now. Well, Schlechter is getting back the piece at least, but white is still a rook up. So after defending the bishop, knight to d7 attacking the queen. So maybe, what now? It is white to move. Flessing played a materialistic, greedy move. And he decided to capture the rook. And this was a fatal move, a greedy move. And this was a self-destruct move. Basically, self-destruction. A queen takes on b7 should have been considered and this would have been better and white is in the ball game actually. White is still in the ball game and white is fighting back. And white has a lot of material but this is still looking very dangerous so... Okay, uh, but capturing the rook. Well, in this position if there was, uh, there was no pawn, if there were no pawn on b5 then queen to d5 is going to be checkmate in two moves. So Schlechter simply captured the pawn and now he is threatening queen to d5, bishop to d2, queen takes on d2, checkmate. So because of the bishop, black can, uh, white can't escape. So making room for the king and still checking the king, so only move. And now, what's next? It looks like the white king is escaping. But Schlechter played an incredible move. He has a very beautiful winning combination in this position. Bishop to e3 first, sacrificing the bishop. Well, obviously king to b1 doesn't work because of check and getting checkmated in two moves. This is checkmate. So after bishop to e3, bishop takes on e3 and it is black to move. Schlechter played one another incredible move. Well, if I give you a few seconds, can you guess the next move of black? If you haven't, of course, seen this chess game before. But I'm going to give you a small tip while you are thinking. If black can somehow land, of course, on d1, well, white is getting checkmated immediately. Also, if black can deflect this bishop to f2, or somewhere like this, <laughs> uh, not in this diagonal, of course, uh, black is still going to win after landing on d2. So how to do that? Okay, Schlechter played knight to f2. What a move and what a move. And now he's threatening checkmate, so how to defend? Bishop takes on f2, but... Please note that king to b1 doesn't work because of check and checkmate. Or if king to c1, checkmate. So after knight to f2, bishop takes on f2, Schlechter checks the king and white resigned. White didn't want to see his king getting checkmated just like this. This is the only move, check, only move, check, mate. Fantastic. He played like Mikhail Tal. Mikhail Tal from the 19th century of chess. So this chess game was played in 1893 in Vienna. Okay, so what a player, what an amazing gentleman too, by the way. He has some other legendary stories about uh, his behavior as a gentleman. So that's it. So I hope to see you next time with more instructive, beautiful chess games. And maybe in the future, in the very near future, I can show some other interactive chess games by Carl Schlechter. So stay safe, take care, and bye-bye.